All right, hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. It's Emily and Cranky Bo. He's actually not cranky. I have my laptop out for my notes and I can't print them because my printer's not working. So we'll see if this works with Bogey out, but if not, I'll put him away. Anyway, this is gonna be a bit of a different video today than what you all are probably used to. This is a bird channel with everything bird related from training and free flight to just my life with Bogey. Uh, if you are curious about Bogey, go check out our Instagram. And I'm gonna get into what we're really gonna talk about today, which is my pregnancy. So for those of you who don't know me, I am six months pregnant right now with my first baby ever. Hey, can you not? Can you not? You know what? I'm just gonna do this until I need my notes. My whole life, I've never been, I've never been the girl who's wanted a baby. I've been a nanny for a long time. I love kids, but I just can't picture myself having my own baby. I've always wanted to be a mom, but it's just like, I've never felt like I was there. Bogey has been my eldest and we're, will always be my eldest. So that's kind of just like background on this whole story situation. So I've always had kind of this idea that I want to get pregnant before I'm 30, but mix that with like the confusion of I don't want a kid. <laughs> it's just confusing. But um, lately my, hu well lately, this is in the past, my husband and I were kind of talking about when we want to have a kid, when we want to start trying. Some people don't get pregnant for a long time, so I was like, we should consider this. I did have PCOS when I was younger, and I had a lot of issues with my hormones, so that's always been in the back of my mind of like, what if I can't get pregnant? I think that's every woman's kind of natural fear. I won't get into the details because I will spare you all, but we went to a wedding. It was very fun. Lots of tequila was flowing and uh, I got pregnant. <laughs> so you can imagine what happened there. But you're stressing me out, but I want you to be in this video. So just like grin and bear it, buddy. Um, I found out I was pregnant at five weeks, super early. My husband had this weird sneaking suspicion because I was acting differently. So he was like, take this pregnancy test, take this pregnancy test. So I did. I called him into the bathroom, freaking out, and he thought I was joking with him because we like to play pranks on each other all the time. And I was like, no, this is for real. It's, there's a plus. It was one of those digital ones. I was like, there, it's a plus. Like these things don't, you don't get false positives. So I just remember we sat on the couch and we were just like in shock and disbelief. I couldn't, I didn't know if I should be like super excited and happy or if I was like, my life's over. I just wanted to talk about what my symptoms were and I really wanted to go over just the first trimester because when I was going through the thick of it, I felt very alone. Not, I have an amazing group of friends and family, but just with information out there, I couldn't find what was going on with me and I was so scared. I was so miserable. I could barely go to work. Um, I had to go to the ER. So I just wanna share my story because I think it would be beneficial, even if it's one person that's like going through what I went through, that maybe it'll calm their nerves. I'll take my notes out now, and of course, bogey will come up. So I found out I was pregnant at five weeks, but before that, now that I look back, I my first symptoms of pregnancy were that I was extremely fatigued, extra, like beyond fatigue. I was in a sales job where I had to commute, and I literally could not drive home. I actually took like a two hour nap in my car for like a week. And that was week four of pregnancy. I actually did think like, what's wrong with me? That month I got pregnant was I think March. And we, I had something every weekend. I had a bachelorette party. I had work parties. I had friends visiting from um, Minnesota. So I was like, maybe it's just the weekends have caught up to me, but I wasn't like, clubbing or going crazy. I was just living a normal life, maybe staying up a bit later, but crazy amounts of fatigue. Uh, my appetite grew immensely, like crazy. I was just downing food, like I'd never downed food before. Okay, it's just me because Bogey was being a little bit crazy and I'm fearful of my feet getting attacked by him. So 
we went over just five to six weeks what that felt like um along with the physical changes of my body there's just a lot of emotional distress and if you are pregnant looking up this video because of the title and you're like maybe she will share some insight i think it's so normal to be scared having a baby is a huge decision figuring out your work and your life and who your partner is and if they're supportive and whether you are excited for this baby or whether it's like this kind of oppressive thing that you're freaked out about it's just it's so much there's so many emotions and on top of that for me it was like okay well sure i'm really excited but what if there's a miscarriage you know what if this baby isn't viable so i think part of my psychology was like don't get your hopes up because if you do what if something bad happens so that was my four to five week or four to six weeks that's kind of what was going on so six to seven weeks is really what i want to talk to you guys about because that's when i had to go to the er um i began getting horrible cramping cramping to the point where i was unable to live my life it was to the point of me having to take work off i would lay on the floor in just agonizing pain and so i started of course you want to google like is this normal is this an ectopic pregnancy am i gonna die is this a miscarriage like what the heck is going on so i started googling everything i googled was like mild to moderate cramping is normal but if it gets severe go to the er so i was like oh this definitely seems severe but like i didn't want to exaggerate what was going on i'm kind of that type of person where i'm like okay it hurts really bad but like i don't know what severe means you know so i even went on reddit and i was like looking at mom forums about pregnancy and first trimester complications and everything and everyone was saying that they had severe cramping and then a miscarriage severe cramping miscarriage and i was just like so at a loss for what to think i had no idea what to think i was like expecting it to be a miscarriage but um this was a full week it was week six to week seven every day laying there and it's what my mom actually described contractions feeling like because the cramping would come in these waves that were so it felt like they were just forever but it was like maybe five minutes five to ten minutes of severe severe cramping led it led me to feel like i needed to go to the bathroom which is also kind of a contraction symptom and i would just be like in a uh just covered in sweat agonizing pain i don't know how else to describe it it was horrible but i'm here to say that i didn't have a miscarriage it was not an ectopic pregnancy i took some tylenol which didn't really help but i got through it i got through it and i actually went to the er because they kept saying look if it keep, if it keeps persisting you need to go talk to a doctor and i finally went in and they did an ultrasound and they did see a heartbeat and that was amazing um but I've, my family i decided to tell all my family and friends because i was like if something does go wrong with the pregnancy i would want all these people around me in support of just my grieving which was my choice a lot of people don't say anything in the first trimester because of all of this drama but what i noticed was i only wanted to tell a few tight people like my my parents my brother and my best friends and i didn't really want to tell anyone else because i was so miserable i was not happy i was like this sucks being pregnant sucks if this baby is gonna do this to me like screw the baby i was so upset because of how horrible i was feeling i was not like in this oh my gosh i'm pregnant like glee it was very intense and scary so don't feel bad if you feel the same way if you're someone who's super excited about your pregnancy that's amazing too i wish that i was a bit more excited in the beginning but you know what you get nine months for a reason and that's so you can sort out all of your crazy emotions before that baby comes into this world. So along with the cramping, I started getting really bad food aversions. I could not look at food. I couldn't smell food. I would get these weird cravings. Like I just wanted this specific type of cake that was like vanilla cake with buttercream frosting. And then I also was craving really tart, cold things like 
lime bars, Gatorade. Um, my mom gave me a bunch of saltines, but I couldn't, I didn't even want saltines. I was like, yuck. I was worried that I wasn't eating enough because I was like, this baby needs food, but your baby gets all the nutrients it needs from you. It's just you that suffers in the end. So keep that in mind. Okay, so the magic seven to eight weeks was when the cramping subsided. It was like this magic number, seven to eight weeks, where the cramping left and I was like, I was done with it. And I was so worried they were gonna come back, but they didn't. It was amazing, I was so happy, but then the nausea set in. And uh, that was not fun. I was basically throwing up I would say like four times a week, so not every day, but it was like if I woke up and drank water, I'd throw up. My prenatal would make me throw up. And then like smelling certain things like coffee. I could not stomach the smell of coffee at all. I had to tell my husband, you need to put the coffee machine outside or you need to throw the filter away and then take the trash out. It was so bad. I was like, get that away from me, no. Uh, feeding bogey in the morning was disgusting. I like could not any smell was like nope get me out of here I'm gonna run in the toilet and throw up so that was not fun But after the cramping that I had experienced I was like give me nausea all day I will throw up every day. <laughs> Just don't give me those cramps again so on top of the nausea and <laughs> the cramping starting to su subside I started getting around ligament pain, which is what happens when your uterus and everything starts to grow. Your hips also expand, which causes like this dull, achy, crampy, bleh. It's not fun. And it just felt like growing pains. Like when you're back in junior high and your leg feels achy and heavy, that's how my like pelvic area felt. Not fun, but it wasn't the worst thing ever. On top of those symptoms, I was just so tired. Like the most tired I've ever been in my whole life. I would go to work and I'd come home and just sleep till dinner. And from everything I read, it says sleep as much as you can. Uh, this is when your body is like basically doubling its blood volume. You're growing placenta. You're stressed about the prospect of having a baby. You're stressed about possibly miscarrying. You're stressed about a billion other things, finances. It's like, just sleep, just sleep it off. You're good. But I was working out every day. I would still at least get out to walk. That was my rule. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna like do what I used to do for this couple of next weeks when I'm having all the nausea and stress and, but I'm gonna go get out and walk for at least 20 minutes a day. So that really helped. Week nine through 10, was just really bad nausea and exhaustion. I continued to throw up. That's basically what happened week nine through 10. I was really tired and I started feeling very faint as well. So week 10 through 12 was a whole new host of symptoms. This is when I started feeling extremely woozy, very, very dizzy. My appetite had increased at this point, but I guess I wasn't eating enough meat. I'm a pescatarian, or I was a pescatarian. I was really trying to stick to that, but I, I needed some extra protein, so I started eating chicken, which really did help with the wooziness, but if it was hot outside, I would be on the verge of passing out, and I've never been the type of person that passes out when I'm hot or tired, like I kind of, I'm a workhorse, I can push through a lot. This was not the case in week 10 through 12. So I started feeling very dizzy, very faint, um, super low blood pressure, like extremely low blood pressure actually. It was kind of scary. I would have this crazy feeling of like, I need to eat now. And if I had that feeling, I would like almost go into like an emotional breakdown if I didn't have food right then and there. So I just learned I need to have snacks around me all the time. Snacks are imperative during your first trimester because you don't know, if, especially if you're queasy, eating might help. So just have snacks around you all the time and this will hopefully prevent the, the woozy, dizzy. So my camera just, my camera battery just died. So I'm back. We were talking about having snacks and week 10 through 12. So moving on to 12, week 12 to 13, my nausea started to subside, which was incredible. I was like, hey, I'll take it. The nausea sucks, it was not fun. 
I started, that's when I started feeling very heavy. Like I just get out of bed in the morning and I just felt like I was stomping on the ground. Just, I haven't gained that much weight, but I, okay, so I'm week 25 right now and I've gained 20 pounds. The doctors say they want you to gain anywhere from 20 to 35 pounds. Uh, if you're having twins, that's more obviously. I've read other books and stuff that say if you if you're very thin to begin with, which I was, you know, you might gain a bit more weight. I've been exercising every day and eating pretty well since the first trimester. But uh yeah, that's just this heaviness. It's just like brr. I just feel like a ton of lead. But anyway, um week 13 to 14, it was kind of the same symptoms, just like getting bigger, no more nausea getting my energy back. This is the second trimester. It's an amazing magical time when you're out of the first trimester and you start regaining energy, feeling good. I, it's like, it's almost like you don't feel pregnant, but your, your stomach is growing. So basically that is my first trimester story that I wanted to share with everyone. I especially just wanted to talk about the cramping because I was so scared when this all happened and if you're going through this, just have hope. Don't get too far deep into that hole of sadness or fear. Go talk to your doctor, go see if you can get that ultrasound and gain some clarity that way. I doubt that everyone's gonna be interested in the rest of the whole pregnancy story just because this is a bird channel, but if you are, let me know and I will continue to make videos. I'm sure the baby and the pregnancy and all that will be included with my bird videos because I'm very passionate about, you know, parrots and I know there's gonna be a huge change in our lives and I just want to be an advocate for proper animal care when faced with change and I'm planning on making sure Bogey is still top priority along with the new baby. And if you feel so inclined, hit that subscribe button and share some comments about what you think or if you've gone through a similar circumstance or if you're pregnant, you know, something that might help the other person who clicks on this video. I'll get Bogey just so everyone can say goodbye. Bogey wasn't in this video for very long, but he's happy to be here now for this little outro. We appreciate you all and we hope you all have an amazing day and let's see if Bogey will wave. Will you wave? Will you say goodbye and wave? He's like, no, we're not gonna wave today, but.